Hey everybody, this is C. Fuzzy. That's Johan, and you're here at the Colorado Quam. And this is the intro to Wing Chun series. Today, we're going to continue along in our trajectory. If you look at the description below, you'll see the previous lessons. Uh, and first, we talked about developing the strength through the ground, right? Strength through the ground. And then connecting the quadrants, connecting the left and the right, and the upper and the lower bodies to work as one. And then uh, Sifu Auto in Hawaii, he uh, came in and did a video on the postures. Um, and also, interestingly enough, how they uh, apply it to everyday um, movement. Then we talked about transferring power that we develop from the ground and our relationship to the ground, transferring that power out to our hands or our elbows or any given part of our body. And then building connectivity in order to aid in the process of transferring that power. So we can all transfer power, but it's through building the connectivity between here to the ground that really gives us a lot of power, right? So then we talked about mobilizing the power, right? Maybe moving in, moving sideways, moving back, but maintaining that ground and that relationship and that power throughout the whole range of movement. So you uh, never lose your ground, never lose your structure. And then we talk about the structure itself, right? Making sure that we really understand how our structure should be. We don't come out of structure, right? We move around, we adjust, but we don't come out of structure. So um, I think I'm adding stuff to here <laughs> as I'm gluing it all together here, right? Uh, then comes functionality and modularity. So what is the function of our movements and the, and the postures and what is the, uh, how do we use these in a modular way, in other words, how do we um, apply it for one thing and then maybe apply the same concept to an entirely different thing, that's the modularity aspect. Then we talked about training in Kaizen just not so long ago, right? right? Uh, how if you just commit if it were five minutes a day, but it has to be daily, Kaizen is a daily thing, but if you just committed five minutes a day on a daily basis, you would be guaranteed progress. So um, Kaizen is a very powerful concept and tool. And then we just talked about in our last class, punching and how, um, you know, what is the Wing Chun punch? What is it for? What's it all about, right? Because there's some, some concepts that are conflicting with a lot of ideas that people have about Wing Chun and punching, okay? But it just turns out that punching in Wing Chun is a much more complex thing than you might want to think, right? I mean, it could be as simple as that, but we also use the punching in order to develop ground and the strength and the tension throughout the whole body, capping it off, right? You're almost like capping off a bottle, mm -hmm. right? It's raging, ah, right? So I like that analogy. Well, I'm glad I, re I, re I recap this stuff, right. come up with new analogies. Right. So it's right. a good one. It's a good one. Uh, um, <clears throat> all right. So think we're, we're up to speed. If you're not familiar with any of those things uh, or you've forgotten, you can go back to the previous lessons 
and check them out. So now today, what I want to talk about is, well, last class is about punch. What do you think this is going to be about? Kicking, of course. <laughs> now, we just happen to have a post here, um, which is the ideal tool for developing your kicking, just as the sandbag is the ideal tool to develop striking. And just as the mojum is the most ideal tool to get your angle together, right? Get the, the moving it, and that's where your mobility comes from. And the modularity, even, because you're using your different fuxal, tonsal for different purposes. Uh, uh, still, same tonsal, but now it's being used over here for a different purpose. Over here, right? So, the uh, the sandbag post is a wonderful tool because it's bolted into the ground and really solid. Now, some of you might have a post already outside, like carports usually use these kinds of posts and whatnot. Um, maybe some of you have trees. We talked about the problem with outside is you kick these in and ants come and get you, right? There's always ants wherever you go outside and you kick, right? So uh, here you've just got the, the luxury of just being able to use this post to kick, right? Man, how wonderful inside outside, right? Now I'm not going to kick this super hard right. because we're still working on one more bolt to fix it in there. This is one of the most difficult things to install, uh, but we keep learning our lessons each right. time we do it. Right. right? We just hope we wish we could learn <laughs> before we do it. <laughs> right? But okay. this is just your perfect training partner when it comes to kicking. Now, same concept with kicking. Um, but maybe even less so. Because, see, in, in, when we're doing our Qigong, our developing energy, developing power and the structure, we're usually really grabbing the ground with our legs, right? When we pivot, then all of that grounding usually goes predominantly to this, what's called the standing leg, and then this is the kicking leg, right? So, as much, uh, we can train a lot and really get that standing leg strong, but it's still not as strong as two legs, right? So we really get a lot of grounding from having our legs on the ground. However, if we get nice and strong in our standing leg, we can justify kicking. Now, let's talk about We'll take this one a little backwards. We use kicking to exercise for balance and developing strength. So I don't know if, I don't think we've done, no, I haven't. Of course, in the introduction to Wing Chun, I haven't done the standing kick. No. But okay. we do those in class. And if you'd like to join us uh, over at patreon.com slash sifuz, uh, we, we have classes almost every day now, yeah. right? And um, you can join in on the different exercises and forms that we do there. Um, so yes, we use the kicks for developing strength, for, for Qigong purposes. But when I think Wing Chun and kicking, I think more of if I'm lifting my legs up, I'm lifting them up for a reason, right? And that, and that is to use them. Okay. Like in other words, when I punch, when I think punching, there's a lot more to the punching that isn't necessarily about hitting somebody, right? It's about getting strength, you know, maybe you're squeezing through if you're being grappling, you know. Mm -hmm. There's just so much more to this fist, right? But when it comes to lifting the feet up, now you're pretty much talking about you're going to use them 
to block or kick. Yeah, you're, gonna, you're definitely going to use it <laughs> and, and make firm contact, right? You know, you know, the knee or, or what have you. Right? Yeah. So now we'll take on some hypothetical questions. These are questions that are typically asked of Wing Chun. How do we kick? What do we kick? Well, we have inside kick, outside kick, and front kick. Yeah, that's the main kicking in Wing Chun. So did you notice? It did go very high. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty much kicking at his knee. The knee level. So now, the question is, does Wing Chun kicking get any higher than that? Well, it kind of does, and Mook Chun is a good example, where you're taking the arm, just put your hand out, I'm not going to grab you, but I'm just going to show you, bring it up here, yeah. So we're, at, we're, I'm blocking here, and maybe you grab me or I grab you, either way, and then I use this. Right, so I'll, I'll go to the hip in order to, uh, you know, do whatever I'm going to do next. Usually we have to maintain that, that uh, distance, you know, um, because they're probably going to try to bring me in. So I keep the distance as they're pulling me in now that they're working against my much stronger leg right. up against the hip. So, um... So in that instance, yeah, the, it's going up to his hip level. So now the question is, does it go any higher than that? Well, kind of, because if I bring his head down, then I may strike like this, or in our chum Q, right, we have this, which is a block, but is also a wonderful strike if you turn it around instead of going this way, you go this way, right? It's Chinese, so you know we'll do everything backwards too, right? right? <laughs> so this way it's a wonderful kick, right? Bam! Yeah. So <laughs> um, so if I brought his head down, like for uh, or he brought his head down in order to do a takedown, then Great strike this way or strike this way, mm. right? So in a way, yeah, we do head kicks, <laughs> right? Or knees to head, more appropriately, right? right? Um, are there any kicks to the head? Kind of. <laughs> and in this particular case, if I'm down on the ground, right, and then you're within range for me to kick you. What a great example is the get up. I think you can see it from there. But uh, those of you in MMA and or certainly in jiu-jitsu, you're familiar with the technical get up is one of the names for it. That's essentially you're posted here and here and you're able to kick, right? So that's very much within the realm of our Wing Chun. Right? Like being here, right? And wham, yeah, right? So. so, yes, Wing Chun has high kicks, but as long as they're down low. <laughs> and that happens, right? Especially if you're dominating with upper, like, you know, maybe I'm, I'm throwing a flurry at you, right? Um, in Wing Chun, things aren't what they quite appear to be. If I'm throwing a flurry at you, I'm probably not actually trying to beat you up by way of throwing punches. What I'm trying to get you to do is go down. Right. Because this is, the, yeah, right, you just go down and then, oh, ah, right? <laughs> or, oh, 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 ah, Double fruit, I'll hold your head down so that way it's right there. I'm going to take it in either way. Right? Or if I want to go really right across, 
us. <laughs> yeah, done. So, punching, no, not punching, kicking. <laughs> kicking, yes. Um, and I think the kicking and the leg work of Wing Chun is probably very underestimated. I certainly underestimated it before I got into doing Wing Chun. I thought from my previous martial arts experience, they were kicking dominant, you know, in karate and shotokan right. and stuff like that. Uh, Taekwondo, all kicking dominant. So I thought I had my footwork and my kicking together, but it turned out it wasn't the same thing. Wing Chun really has you grounding. The grounding is the important part because we're grounding ourselves and then taking that, again, the energy from the ground and transferring it into, in this particular case, the knee or the kick, all right? Yeah, and where for punching we have sandbags that we can practice that with bringing the energy out and striking this, having the, the, the post is really the tool for getting your, your kicking together and getting your kicking strong. Now, the, if you have a post that you can't kick too hard, or maybe you're a big guy and it, you'll just break them, mm -hmm. you know? It's almost like the move jump. Don't think so much of breaking and beating up the move jump or the post. Think of it as a nice tool to, of something that you can kick in order to test your base, right? right? Yeah. So uh, I, I, I'm thinking really more about my standing leg than I am my kicking leg. Because if my standing leg is weak, then my kicking leg is useless. Yeah. If my kicking leg's strong, then the, the kicking leg is going to be strong. So, and that was another kick that was from that's actually a wing chun because of moving back. Right. Yeah, so all it is just lifting up a little. Yeah, doing, it, it, that's commonly known as a donkey kick. One of my favorite self-defense techniques. Running away and then stop. Then <laughs> turn around. <laughs> so, um, that's it with the kicks. Yeah. Now what we don't do, we don't do those high sweeping kicks, that kind of stuff. Boy, I just yeah. felt really old doing that. Yeah. I used to make that look good at least. Right. <laughs> like, hey, don't try to do that. <laughs> but, right. Yeah, we don't do those high kicks. And the reason being is it's just, there. It, it's too hard to maintain the um, the strength in the standing leg. To really keep the grounding in the standing leg if you race up too high. Because usually your, your, he, your heel comes up. And once your heel comes up, you've got no ground. Which means that I can disrupt your kick, or if I'm just rounded and then you kick me, it's not really going to do anything because, you know, um, to an extent. You know, there, you have a person's momentum to deal sure. with, right? So uh, there is that. <laughs> but in general, um, you can rush a person that's, that's kicking, uh, especially as you catch them as they're bringing the leg up. You know, you saw that they're a high kicker, right? So right before, as they're lifting the leg up, right as they're lifting the leg up, you can just walk right in and then disrupt them very easily, right? So um, so we don't, in Wing Chun, kick very high. And also, you can really uh, hurt your hamstrings kicking high like that. Yeah. <laughs> this is a fitness self-defense, right? Not a, a showy, sporty uh, martial art. But, although I do think it's, it's really beautiful. So um, have I covered enough to introduce them to our footwork. Yes, so our, 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 our kicking is really an extension of our kimi ma, right? 
our kicking is only as strong as our connection to the ground with one leg, right? And then um, once you do have that, you know, a lot of times somebody could be very, you know, they might be able to catch that leg, right? And then try to take you down. But if you're really strong in that standing leg, it's very easy to balance, right? Very easy. But you have to be strong in that standing leg. If you're not standing as strong in your standing leg, then you're going down. They're just going to sweep that, that leg. Hook, sweep, pound. <laughs> so, okay. If you have any questions regarding this, any comments, uh, certainly leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe and to hit that notification bell to know when I create new lessons, which has been practically every day since we got to Denver. Right. And who knows? Who knows? Will this ever end? <laughs> uh, if uh, you'd like to join us regularly and train with us online, I've been doing that since 1998 or so. And um, so uh, if you'd like to come and join us, we have a wonderful crowd that we've been working with. Uh, some that have been training for many, many years it's since the 90s, right? Um, and uh, you can join us over on patreon.com slash sifuz. If you'd like to contribute to these lessons, just, you know, to say thanks, uh, you can do so by going to paypal.me slash sifuz. Uh, I believe you spell sifuz capital S, I-F-U capital Z. All one word, paypal.me slash um, All of those are on the links. All you have to do is go to sifuzi.com and you find links to all that stuff as well. All right, we'll see you in the next lesson.